Yep. Okay, so again, we're going to talk briefly about a style. So again, um, here's your why. So let, let's talk first about this one, following design guidelines. So if I click on this, this design guidelines here, you're going to... You inspired me for the final project to see if you were the ability to come in here. So they're going to take the Beatles down, and you're putting your final portrait up there, okay? So you need to be ready with your portrait by December 13th. At what time? 11 11.50. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So, again, design cell. So here, here is the National Park Design Guidelines, and uh, this is kind of a PDF, but it really shows you what you might need to follow. Oops, it's taking a little while to download here, but this is the identity guidelines. And West Valley has the same uh, thing for the identity guidelines for the West Valley logo and stuff. So these are the guidelines that you need to use if you're going to make a brochure or a website or some kind of media for the National Park Service. And if you go through, you can see it's kind of big, and you'll see, and they write about it. Um, and then they talk about how to use the logo, right? What is appropriate use of the logo? Where and what size the fonts need to be? Website, look at all this, right? Print media and so on. So I, like I said, I think I told you, I used to do a lot of work for Westinghouse, um, natural gas, consolidated natural gas, and all those corporations. They had a guideline. I had, and back then it was all printed out. I used to have a little book. What we're going to do, what we're going to do. Assignment for Westinghouse. I would have to get the little book out and do that. A lot of times I follow templates I've already made so I couldn't make it as hard. But, uh, you know, they had specific colors, specific positions, specific sizes. The font had to be a specific size. Westinghouse was very, 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 you know, logos are very important. And the way you use a logo from a corporation, whoosh. You need to follow that. That's very important to them. So even the National Park Service has their guidelines of the type of grid they're going to use and so on. So, you know, you might want to look through this to see how uh, 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 a template would be used, right? And you'll see there's a whole bunch of ways of doing it. So that's all I wanted to talk about briefly was there. And I think there is some video, but I, I don't remember where I put those. But that was it right here. Then here's the Wired Magazine one, if you haven't watched that. Again, it's kind of well, short. You want to create a stunning website. I've already done it. Have you seen this guy's uh, uh, video before, this, this, this guy right here? No, not this commercial. The same character, the same. He's, he's not an actor. He's a no, computer guy. <laughs> exactly. She knows what I'm talking about. He he made a he made a video about spamming. Uh, uh, you know he he made a video, and we have, let's watch it today when I'm done talking. You're gonna watch it today when we have some lab time. But he he made a video about how he responded to one of those uh, spam emails, right? You get spam email from the you know the Prince of Niger or something like that, right? And he responded to it, and what his correspondence were back and forth between the spammer and him, and it was just hilarious. But he's a comedian. He must be a comedian. It was hilarious. It wicks. Let me show you how it's done. Okay, again. For a TV. Oops. Old is thinking. Again, there's a video where they talk about Wired Magazine and how they do design. Okay, so you can watch that. Uh, and then um, here's your Wired Magazine card assignment. So again, you need to make a subscription card. You should do front and back. We'll do front and back in class. Uh, you'll notice here's the back. It kind of looks like this, pretty much it's standard. What would I use for these rectangles right here? What was the tool we, we should demonstrate last time? What was that one made the uh, thing? What's the name of that tool? Blend tool. Remember the blend tool, right? Blend tool would be good there, and so on. So the blend tool. And then, uh, of course, here's the front cover. So, 
like that. Okay, so we're going to make a card. Remember, the text needs to be, the logo needs to be a specific way, right? Okay, so before I start, I'm going to go and download one of the uh, 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 covers. I'm going to, because I'm going to use a bitmap image. Most of this stuff will be vector, but I'm going to use a bitmap image. So here we go. I'm going to use a bitmap image. I'm going to just download one of the covers. Uh, let's see. Whatever cover I download, I need to use kind of that color style as well. So if I'm going to download this one, I might use a red kind of color scheme in my um, my subscription card. Or this one, I might use orange and so on. So again, depending upon the the one you download. And then try and download something that has a lot of resolution. If I downloaded, look at this one, three, 300 by 300 pixels. Dimensions. Try and find something that has a little bit more pixels to it. I know it's a bitmap image, but look at the pixels. No. That even a Brad Pitt doesn't have enough resolution. You would think they'd have more resolution on his. Uh, at least a Leonardo DiCaprio yeah, has a larger. Oh, but it has a bunch of junk around the outside. I don't want that. Oh, this one has a lot of. Re Let's do the uh, Stephen Colbert. I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to download this. And um, I'm going to use that in my subscription card. OK, so again, I'm going to start with uh, Illustrator. And I think the cards, uh, dimension-wise, are what? Three and a half by what size do you think they are? No, three and a half by five, I think. This is the standard card right here. Hell, I don't even have a ruler in this room. I don't even have a ruler in this room, do I? By the time you mount this, it should be here by next week. We're gonna get a new printer too. New. Thank we're gonna get a color printer, yeah. But not not this one. It's gonna stay. But we're gonna get a new color, small color one that you can do a test on. We can use it from this this one, the color printer. So we can connect it to the computer. Screen. Yeah, we're gonna get a small one though that you can print to that does only eight and a half by eleven, but it'll be connected all. For your final print portrait, you have to mount it on the board. Yeah, mount it on the board. We can talk about that next class. Let me finish with the bark card. Just, I, I'm trying to struggle here. What do you think this is? Three by five. Four by six. Four by six. Okay, we'll go with that. I just I can't think right now, and I don't have a room. So here we go. I'm going to make a card. Remember, and you need a front and back. So I'm going to do two artboards. I'm going to go under File New, File New, and over here where inches are, I'm going to do. Uh, you can do width of uh, six, and we can do four. Of course, it's going to be like this, right? I guess six by four. And then I'm going to do two artboards. And I'm going to do CMYK because it would be printed, right? A magazine is printed, right? Okay, so again, four by six, two artboards for front and back. CMYK for printing. I'm going to hit create. And I have two artboards, right? Okay, so. First thing I'm going to do is let's talk about the edge for a moment. Uh, I'm going to do a, a kind of a dotted edge. A lot of the cards and the ones I don't have here actually have a dotted edge. So let's talk about that real briefly. So um, the dotted edge is going to come from a rectangle. I'm going to use a rectangle 
and I'm gonna have a, a stroke of uh, probably about five or maybe even more six and I'm gonna have no fill and before I do that, I'm going to bring up the stroke options. And because the reason why I want to bring up the stroke options is because I want to show you how you can adjust the way a dotted line can be adjusted. So I'm going to go underneath stroke options here, stroke options. So bring up stroke, right here, stroke. And when you bring up stroke, that's basically a line that goes around an object. You see I changed my weight, 6 right here. Um, but in the upper right corner of the stroke, there actually is show options or more options. So I'm going to show more options. And so for my wired card, I'm going to have kind of a black line that goes around it. Um, and what I want to talk about is the corner right here and the dashed line. So we're going to do a dashed line that goes around. And um, you'll notice this says 12 point right here, and I have 6 point weight. You see 6 point, 12 point right here. So let's just make it for first. I'm going to make just kind of a, it, my card's going to have a little dotted line that goes around the edge. And I'm just going to draw it kind of briefly around the edge here and release my mouse. And you can see I can have a rectangle of a dotted line that goes around the edge. Notice how it follows the center, the six point follows the center. And notice how they're kind of all pretty much equal distance. And the distance between the dashes is done by using this option right here where you see the dashes. So if I wanted more space between them, I could change this to 24, which would double it. Now watch what happens. Now I got bigger lines with bigger space. See the lines bigger, right? The dashes are bigger. Uh, 12 seemed to work well as far as spacing wise. I'm going to go back to that. So it's kind of like the dashed lines and the gap between it. You can also change the, the gap between it. So if I want to double the space, the white space between the dashes, what do you think I'd put in there? 24, right? Now I have about double the space in there. If I leave this blank, it'll probably it'll make them even. You don't necessarily have to do the dashed line with that. Okay, now they're even, right? The other thing to keep in mind is let's look at the edge. If I zoom in on the edge, you'll notice this isn't a nice corner right here, is it? This is kind of a nice corner down here, right? Well, what Illustrator has is this option here for dashed lines right here. So this is kind of like reformat to make the corners nice. So if I click on this one, you'll notice the corners will be nice. It'll re kind of calculate it. So keep in mind there's like a corner thing right here. See it right here? So all the corners will be equal right here for this one right here. So I'm not sure how it calculates it, but it does it. Then you do have round edges if you want to dash right here. See this option right here for a cap? Notice how the dashes are now round edge. It's, this is called a cap. Square edge, round edge, and then this is just a different square edge, but it's a little bigger because it's, it's taking the six point into consideration along the edge, which then makes the edges not even. This would make the edges even. And then, of course, you have a corner. Do I want a round edge on my corner? And that just changes the corner. If you look at this, you'll notice this is just the corner right here. You'll see I have square, round, and then this is kind of bevel. We call that bevel. So you can change that. And, of course, this is where the alignment is, and, and it's not allowing me to adjust that. And then, of course, you can make an arrowhead at the end. I don't need an arrowhead because this is a rectangle. But if you were making a diagram of some kind, you can make strokes that actually have arrows. So if you're pointing at things and you want an arrow that says, hey, look at this, look at that, you can have arrows at the end of things. So I just wanted to point all these out because this is kind of one of the tools I go over for this lesson is making sure you understand how to deal with dashed lines. And there's a lot of wired cards that have dashed lines around the edges like that. Okay, next, if you remember from last class, we were using the blend tool. So I'm going to make a nice kind of different background with this um, layout where I'm going to use, a, um, use the blend tool as a background for my card. And so I'm going to kind of zoom out a little bit here. Oop. I'm going to zoom out. And um, kind of the last thing I did, I'm going to make a new layer for this too. You might want to have lots of layers for this lesson because it's going to get kind of messy with a lot of pieces in here. So I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to call it background. And I'm going to put it, of course, in the bottom for the background. 
Now I'm going to make a, uh, just kind of what I did last class at the very end of class last time where I did the rectangles and I used the blend tool to make the rectangles. So I'm going to zoom out again. And so instead of using the, the plain gradient tool, because we already know if I want a gradient, I can, you know, I can make a rectangle. Oh, make sure I'm on the background layer. I can click on there. You know, I can click on there. And uh, I'm going to turn that off, and I'm going to give it um, a gradient. And you'll see, oh, I got a beautiful gradient. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Uh, I want to have some color in my gradient. There it is. And I can change the rotation of my gradient. No. That's all in good, but you'll notice it's super smooth. Right, super smooth, and that's not kind of the look I want. I'm gonna go with the, the the rectangles that I had last class, so I'm gonna use the blend tool. So I know this looks good and everything, but that's not really what I want. So if you remember, I was doing kind of a logo for artist association or something like that last class. So I'm gonna use the rectangle this time without a without a gradient, and I'm gonna draw a rectangle. It goes across the top here. Then I'm going to duplicate that to the bottom. If I can duplicate here, hold on. I'm going to duplicate that to the bottom. And then I'm going to change the color of that. Um, oh, should we use whitish? Let's do whitish. And do kind of a pinkish. And then this one, I'm going to go very light, very light. Very light, very light. Okay. So I'm going to, this time for my background, I want it to have kind of a style to it. And the style is going to be kind of a repeated rectangle. If you remember, the tool we were using last class was this one, the blend tool. So with the blend tool, how I'm going to use it is I'm going to select my objects. Or actually, I don't even need to select them. I can just keep them deselected. But I can use this tool right here, the blend tool. And I click on one icon or one dot so when you're using the blend tool you click on the um, point I'm going to click on the point on the upper corner here and click on the point of the upper corner here and oh it looks smooth right that's not the look I want I want my background to have that kind of rectangle look if I double click on my blend tool after I do this I can then say if you remember from last class I could say specify steps right here and if I put in maybe 12, I can hit preview, see what it looks like. Oh, not enough. Let's put in 24. Hit tab, almost. Let's put in 30. Hit tab, tab. Oh, almost so close. How about 34? Tab. Oh, not enough. 38. Tab. There we go. Now it looks like it's smooth, but if we zoom in, oh, it is smooth, isn't it? I guess it's too smooth. How did I get that nice rectangle look last time? I guess I had a, multiple colors. Didn't I, I? I guess I had multiple colors. Do you remember that nice rectangle look I had last class? How did I do that? Specified steps. How did I, I had different colors. Is that it? Oh, now I remember. We did multiple. We had did multiple steps. Let me undo that. Yeah, that, that that I wanted to go with that look I had from last class. I had multiple rectangles. That's why. Remember, I went from this rectangle to this rectangle, and so on. And I changed these colors. I just like that look. Yeah. So let me see if I can get that back again. I went from, where was that? I went from this one to this one, this one to this one, and then this one to this one. But it had that nice blocky look, didn't it? This doesn't have that blocky look. Maybe my, block, my blocks need to be bigger, huh? Maybe that's it. Let me try that. Maybe my blocks need to be bigger. Okay, let me try that. 
There we go. Big block. Big block. Let me try this uh, again. Let's go from this one to this one. And then uh, let's specify um, 10. Oops. It's just not working for me. So each rectangle you did a different primary color. Yeah. Okay, whatever. I'm moving on. You look at the video from last class if you want the look I was trying to do. I don't know. I had a, a wonderful kind of rectangle look background last time. And for some reason it's not working, so... I don't know. I'm going to go with a solid background. I'm just going to use a solid background. I'm going to go with solid background. Okay, solid background color. So let's make the uh, logo. Again, the Wired Magazine has a specific look for the logo. So uh, you can deviate, but you'll notice they all follow the kind of style. So uh, let's do that real quick. Um, it depends on if you want your text to come through or do you want it to be solid. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is put my text on the screen. So I'm going to type in Wired. Notice they're all kind of caps most of the time. I'm going to choose a specific font. They use kind of this, ooh, look at that. It's kind of, most of them are sans serif, though I do, I, I think I did see serif font before. There we go. How about our Bedoni or that kind of look like it? No, it doesn't look like it, does it? That's pretty freaking ugly. Hold on. <laughs> I can't find a nice font. I don't know. Typewriter? That's horrible. Actually, that's kind of close. Okay, um, in addition, this as I look at this one, you'll notice the I and the E are sans serif, where the W, I, R, R and D are serif. Do you see that? So you don't necessarily have to. Can I, can I put a different font in here? Can I put a different font in there? It doesn't look like it, can it? Can I have a different font in between my thing here? Ooh, look at that. Okay. And then let's change the uh, line spacing so there's more space in between. So I'm going to bring up font, I'm going to bring up the type option, and I'm going to change the, uh, uh, where are we at here, uh, I want more line spacing in here, oh, really, and so um, let's increase the lines, 
There we go. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. And then let's uh, do our rectangle. So I have a font. Okay, so I'm going to do a rectangle with a round rectangle. And then uh, let's send that to the back. Let's change the color. Whoosh. Let's make the font white. Well, let's finish with this first here. I guess we can't do that. So let's make this one white. Let's make this one. Let's make this text red. No, it didn't work. There we go. So I'm almost done here. So again, I'm doing nice bold. They like it to be bold and, and you know, big and bold. There we go. And then let's duplicate this. I need to get that rectangle here. Let's duplicate that. This needs to have a little bit more line spacing. Let's, let's move this over a little bit. Need to be different sizes? No. Let's go. There we go. So if you want to adjust the space between individual letters, like this one and this one, what would we call that? Space between two letters. I want to bring this I closer to the W. Kerning, yes. So in our character option here, I can go to my kerning option here, and I can go down in time. There we go. We're doing it. Doing it for Johnny. There we go. And then um, this one, I might need to add a little bit more space, so I'm going to adjust the kerning up. Oh, there we go. And then let's make this one white. So white, red, white, and then this one, um, I'm going to make this one red. And then uh, let's duplicate the rectangle here. And then let's make this letter white. Okay, so my whole point here is I've kind of followed the style, as you can see. The other thing is I had to use kerning. Kerning is this one right here. Look, between individual letters, between. So you click between the two letters and you can go up and down. They have negative and positive values. This is the one that's all the letters that go across, right? All the letters going across in between. And so this would follow the style, right? That do good? Yeah. So I have my logo done. Let's continue with our card. Uh, I'm going to bring in my bitmap image that I did. The reason why I was using red is because I think I chose a red uh, bitmap. Remember that? So let's talk about bringing in the bitmap. So I have my, and I probably could do a little bit of adjustment here. Sorry, I'm going to have to do that. I'm getting picky here. I'm going to go between here, and let's bring this down just a little bit. No, not that. I don't want to do that. Oh, what did I want? I want the, here, put the E over a little bit. I want to do a little positive there. Oh, maybe just a little bit more. Look at that. You got to look in detail here. Oh, how about that? Does that look better? Just a little bit. 
So use that kerning to adjust just a little bit. And it's all a little bit large. Let me lock the bottom layer here. Let me lock the bottom layer here. I don't mess with that. And then let's uh, lock this so I don't mess with that. And I'm going to shrink this all down. Now here's the problem. If I shrink it down, how will, this, how, how will that affect the spacing? Ooh, a little bit. Not too much. Okay. So let's bring in our, our bitmap image. I'm going to bring in my bitmap image by going place, place. And I'm going to choose my card. And I'm going to draw my card. And so here's my wired card. Ooh. Okay, and then um, let's talk about adjusting your bitmap image. You can do basic things with the bitmap inside of Illustrator. Some of the things you can do is you can actually rotate it quite easily. So if I wanted this to be on an angle, I could rotate it a little bit which is quite nice. And everything, if I wanted to, you know, since I'm mixing kind of bitmap and vector graphics, if I wanted this to kind of stand out, I also might put a drop shadow on it so it looks like it's a little bit um, sticking out. So uh, to do a drop shadow is under effects, uh, stylized um, drop shadow. And I can apply a drop shadow to my bitmap and I can hit preview there. And you can see it and you can adjust. Now, not very easy to adjust. Um, the settings here are a little bit difficult, but um, you can go. Now it's like 0 0.1 inch. It's, it's just like, it's kind of, it's not very intuitive. But if I put, I want a half a drop shadow, I would put a, a, a 0 0.5 in there. And it moves a little closer. And so I'm going to do a 0 0.5 as well here. And then the other thing is you can change the color if you want, but I'm going to stick with black. And then um, you can, if you want it more of a drop shadow, you can say normal or no, that, that's still not right. Multiply. Oh, here's an opacity. You can turn it up so it's darker. So again, I have applied a drop shadow. Oof, it's still a little big, isn't it? And remember, if you want to adjust something that you've already applied, um, and let me let me make a new layer here. Uh, let me move it up there. If you want to um, adjust uh, something that you've already applied, what do you need to do? Of course, you need to go to the appearance window. The appearance window is under window appearance, and there's where my drop shadow is and then I can go I'm gonna do all the way down to like three maybe even two even two that's a little better I just didn't like it so big so a little shadow behind it um, we have the card um, you know I might actually instead of using this red maybe use the red from the card so that the color here matches that that might be nice I'm kind of running out of time, so I'm going to continue. But, you know, think about color. If you're using a bitmap image like this, you might want to use the colors that are in this bitmap with the logo or something like that so that's matching. But I'm not going to do that because I don't want to spend the time. But just concept is what I'm trying to point out to you. Um, uh, the other thing is, is let's see what, what normally we put on a card. A lot of times we put on things that um, uh, subscribe now. What do we have on there? Let's just bring up some things. I forgot what they look like. Oh, here it is. And look, the, the logo doesn't need to be in the upper left corner. This one's in the right. I know this was one of my students, but still, um, you know, and then, you know, this is quite nice, huh? So, uh, again, uh, what do we have? What do we see here? Cover price you save, best deal ever. They got some nice sort of things like that. They got this nice just a dollar an issue, subscribe now. So you have all these things that you can put on there. Uh, I like this, oh yes, one year, 24 things. So very interesting design there. So um, 
just a dollar an issue, I might go with that. Subscribe now. So I'm going to start putting some content on here. Let me start putting some content on there. Uh, I'm going to go, uh, let's go up here is a very dominant area up here. So we might put in um, a big one like this. Um, and maybe exaggerate it a little bit. And, um, yeah, ooh, that doesn't look good. So, um, you can be kind of creative with your letters. Uh, and I'm just going to go and adjust some of my settings here and adjust my maybe change the color there we go that doesn't look good does it oh, maybe we put green in there Boy, we're going all out here. Christmas colors. You can change fonts. So maybe this is a different font. Make it stand out. I don't know. You can be very creative with the typography is what I'm trying to say. If you look at the magazine, you know, it's all over the place, right? It's all over the place. And these lots of initial letters. So think about things like that, you know, as far as that. I don't know if I like that font, but let's go with something different. Maybe something like that. Maybe make this bold. There we go. Nice big fat one. How about that? A big fat one like that. Make it stand out. Alignment's very important. I would probably align the bottom of this with the bottom of the logo. Uh, if you remember how to put guidelines on, you can put guidelines on by using the rulers. So if I bring up the rulers by going under view, rulers, show rulers, I can put a line that goes along the bottom here by putting my cursor in the ruler, holding my mouse down and dragging down. And, and then I can see a line and then it'll help me line things up here so I can line that up like that. How about that? Or maybe I want to line it up with the bottom of the text here. I can move the guideline up. I can move the guideline around and then I can move this up like that. That looks a little better, right? So don't forget about guidelines. Guidelines can be put on your screen by using in the ruler, holding the mouse down and dragging down. Same with over here. I might put guidelines so I line things up like here. Okay, so let's see what else we, we put on. We've got a dollar an issue. Uh, what do we got? Cover price. You pay. You pay only $12, whatever you want there. So how would I make this graphic that you see here with these rectangles? Oh, quite easy. I would just use the rectangle tool. I would probably just use the rectangle tool and, um, you know, draw a little rectangle out, make it a little stroke color for the lines. Very nice. Um, and then if I was going to do, um, you know, just put some lines in there. You don't need that. If I can find my line tool, here it is. Here's my line. Uh, maybe make a line that goes across here. And then make a line that goes down here. And then duplicate that line over here. And how could I make these all even here? I can't. <laughs> it would be nice if I could. I'm just eyeballing that. And then uh, wh wh what did it say? I can't remember. This is kind of big. Maybe not. I don't need this all there. Let me make that a little smaller. There we go. Um, what, what, what did it say? Um, something about um, cover price right cover price and of course let's change the font of that 
go with a simple sans serif font and let's go and change the style let's change the size something that's easy to see right there we go that's still too big let's center align that so it's easy when we duplicate it to um, align it so we got cover price and then uh, oh what is the cover price what did it say? Anybody remember? No, I think it was like $56, right? I don't know. We're going to go with that. And then I'm going to duplicate across. So again, remember, I center align the text so that I can duplicate this very easily here. So I'm going to duplicate it by using option, click, and drag. And this is going to be you pay, you, you pay, pay, I think, right? And it was $12 an issue, right? $12. And then I can duplicate that again. Uh, again, duplicating that. And then, um, what, was, what was the final line say? Anybody remember? Oh, you pay only. Oh, you save. Oh, jeez, jeez. You save. And then, what was it, 79 and then you pay only. Ooh, it doesn't fit. Oosh. Should I change the box? Is that okay? Cheating. Cheating's good. And oh, I should have moved this at the same time. There we go. What do you think of that? And then she had a little brush that went around this, right? Remember the brush? In the brush, I'm going to use a, uh, oh, let's do the red. I'm going to use the red. Oops, no, not that. The bright red. And I'm going to use a brush. And in my brush, I'm going to use a specific style. Where's my brush styles? Brush, brush, brush. And, oh, use this one. Let's change it to a little bit bigger. And then let's do a little swish. Woo, that's too big. Let's change it to um, two. How about that? Better? Too big still? It's not a nice brush, is it? Can we get a nicer brush? We need a nice brush. Why is it doing that? Seems to be, that's a little better. How about that? What did it say there? Oh, and then it says best deal. Whoosh. And then we could use a font, a brush type of font. Ooh, that's horrible. We have a brush font. Do I have anything that's like brush brush? Brush font. That's, that's no good. I don't know. That's no good either. Okay, well, whatever. It'd be nice to have some. Oh, there we go. Blade Runner. There we go. Blade Runner font. Let's make that the same color. There we go. And let's rotate that kind of on the same angle as this right here. Rotate it on the same angle as that. Keep things aligned. Kind of try and line it up. See how the line goes from here down. That would be good. Let's group this all together so we don't mess with it. 
There we go. What do you think? Not bad so far? Okay, let's put in uh, uh, the standard subscription stuff where you got your name, address, phone number, right? Things like that. So uh, if you look, you know, most subscription cards would have this kind of stuff right here, right? This kind of thing right here. So we got name, street, city, state, zip code, and email, right? Uh, we can put it in a box. I kind of like the idea of it being in a box there, but um, no, it's kind of, well, let's just do it as a line. So again, how many lines did we have in this? One, two, three, four lines. So evenly way to evenly space four lines, again, would be to use the um, alignment features. So uh, I'm going to draw a line, and then I'm going to duplicate that line. Okay, and then if I want to evenly space them, there is an alignment tool inside of Illustrator. It's a pop-up window. If you've never used the alignment feature, it's a really useful, helpful. So again, if this was a little off, I'm not very good at um, lining things up. I can easily go to the alignment feature and align things to the left. Oh, you got to select them all, of course. Select them all, and I can line them to the center. So they're all lined up in the center here. And then if you want them evenly spaced, it's down here, distribute, distribute. And then if I click on this one, they'll be evenly spaced, okay? So if you're doing things and you're trying to line things up, the alignment feature is very useful for you to align. Okay, so now we have some text we need to put in there. So we're gonna put in our, um, what it was, uh, what was it, your name? Was it name? 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 And we're gonna make that kind of small. And, <laughs> It's really going with that. There we go. So something small like that. Nice little name right there. And then um, let me zoom in here. So we got name. Well, what else was there? Street? Was it street? Street? I think it said street. And then uh, what else do we have? We had city. And then... Uh, What else does a card have? It says, please print name. This one says, please, please print name. Or is it please print? It just says, please print. And then this one says apartment. Like that, apartment. And I don't think we need this one in the middle here. And then this was, uh, what, state? And then what else? Oh, zip. We need zip code. Zip. And then, um, and then we have country. And so I'm going to duplicate these. And this one is country. Ooh, country? Con con county? County? No, country. C O U N T Y? No, C O U N T R Y. That was right. Why do I have a U in there? Is that right? Yeah. Country? Country? Is that how you spell country? just doesn't look right to me I'm sorry I don't know what it doesn't look and then this says email and then uh, the box below that is going to be payment and closed and so let's move this up just a little bit let's move that up a little bit let's group that together and then I'm gonna do a rectangle here in the middle nice square Oh, a square one and I'm going to duplicate this text. And uh, again, I'm going to call that um, uh, 
Really? I don't need to. I need to. Where's my text tool? Text tool. Text tool. And this is going to be uh, payment enclosed. And then, oh, let's move that over just a little bit. Really? You know, let's duplicate that. And that one will say, uh, bill me. That's it, bill me. Later. Bill me. Let's use this as a small e. Okay, so you'll notice I, I think the most important feature of what I'm doing is you see me duplicating, aligning. You know, you need the whole purpose of this is that you're practicing to duplicate. You're thinking of fonts, using fonts in a specific way. Um, get the iPad version, might be text you put in there. I kind of like. Um, you know, this one, you know, subscription now, just a dollar an issue, get a gift. You can maybe put that in there. Look at maybe some different fonts in there. Maybe use this crazy font that I have up there. You know, maybe say, what a gift. And then, you know, mess with these fonts a little bit. You know, maybe change the color here. Maybe use the red here with this. Come on, it's, it's Halloween here. Or not Halloween, this is uh, almost the holidays here. There we go. Maybe stretch it out like that. How about that? What a gift. See? I don't know. What it, yeah, maybe put an exclamation point after that. There. Yeah, what a gift. Maybe put a, you know, a Christmas present wreath on it or something. See? So... Yeah, and then you got some space over here. So look at all the different things you can do with it. You know, there's a whole bunch of fun, interesting ones. I wish I could bring my whole magazine collection here for you to look at. But um, the other thing to keep in mind, when we were doing the artist statement, we were talking about initial letters, right? And, and if you think about it, they use these big, bold, you know, they, each article starts with, Think of creative ways that you can use. Make sure you do the logo. And it's kind of style. It doesn't have to be boring like that. Maybe use a gradient. Maybe, um, you know, maybe you have a hole through there. You know, if you want to cut a hole, use a pathfinder and something underneath it to come through. Right? Look, look at this one with all the, uh, look at all the glowy things in this one. Yeah. Alright, we'll pass these around. You can look at them, pass them around so you can see it. Pass them around, pass them around. Okay, let me finish the back. You want me to finish the back today or next class? Next class. Next class. Okay, I can finish the back next class. And then we'll start the portrait and we'll talk about it. How about that? At least talk about it. Yeah, we'll get into the portrait then. Yeah. You want me to talk about portrait now? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's talk about portrait now. Oh, sorry. Can you give us another half an hour? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.